Why, hello there. Welcome to Orgo on the Floor. Just kidding. So anyway, yeah. This video, I wanted it to be sort of an overview, intro, and a summary of what basically the Jones region, PCC, does to alcohols. And the reason why I have H2CR04 here and CR03 here is because there are many different versions of the Jones region and different professors, they use their own different versions. So um, I just wanted to include all of them so you guys won't be looking at them and be like, wait, why is there a H2CR04? Why is there a CR03? Okay, and there, there are more, for sure. But in reactions, they all basically work the same way. So it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to worry about it. All right, so uh, we're basically going to be taking a look at the effects of uh, the Jones reagent and PCC on primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, and tertiary alcohols. And yes, the uh, annoying blank taped up pieces of papers are back again. I, yeah. Before we get started, I just want to quickly go over the, the two reagents. So uh, the Jones reagent is just usually a variation of a chromate or chromium reagent. If you see chromium there in a couple of oxygens, Chances are it's going to be a Jones reagent, and it's going to do what I'm going to show you right now. Okay, and then PCC. Uh, the reason why it's called PCC is because it is per peridinium, so that's basically kind of like hydronium, right? When hy when water gets a hydrogen molecule, it gets it becomes H3O and gets that neum ending. So you guys have probably seen perid peridine before in other reactions. It's a pretty good base. So this is the form of peridine after it gets a hydrogen. So that's why it's peridinium, and then chloro, like for the chlorine, and then chromate because of this part. So peridinium, chloro, chromate. Just, just in case that might help you guys um, kind of remember the structure uh, for the test or anything, but yeah, I don't think it's too big of a deal. But anyway, yeah, so now to the Keymap Videos Interactive, I want you guys to try and guess what the products are if you react primary alcohols with Jones reagent and PCC, or secondary alcohol with Jones and PCC and tertiary alcohols with Jones and PCC. Okay? Alright. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so give that a shot. Um, hit pause in a couple seconds because I'm going to take down these pieces of paper and you don't want to see your products too early. Okay? Alright. I don't know, but let's just test this out. A primary, a primary alcohol, right? What happens so with every X with the Jones reagent is that it <sighs> becomes a carboxylic acid. And boom, here are your products. So, uh, for a primary alcohol, right, what happens is your Jones reagent, it oxidizes your alcohol from a primary alcohol to a aldehyde intermediate and then to a double alcohol, also known as diol intermediate, and then finally to carboxylic acid. But just keep in mind that the aldehyde uh, intermediate here, you can't retrieve it because this reaction happens so fast that uh, it just goes straight to carboxylic acid, basically. So like, if you're in a lab, you'd stick your hand in there into the beaker and try and look for the aldehyde. That's not going to happen. But then again, you guys probably won't be sticking your hand into a beaker. But yeah. Uh, and then for PCC, what happens is your primary alcohol gets oxidized and it turns into a aldehyde. But in this case, it's actually retrievable and it stops right here. It doesn't go all the way to a carboxylic acid. Uh, the way I kind of think about it is the Jones reagent is sort of like fire. When you're trying to warm up your hands, if you go, if you touch fire, it's gonna burn your hand right away, right? It's really, really intense, and that's exactly how the Jones reagent is. Once the once your primary alcohol comes into contact with the Jones reagent, it's gonna oxidize it to a aldehyde in like a microsecond, and then the next microsecond is gonna go straight to carboxylic acid. So it's nice and really, really intense, like um, yeah, like fire, I guess. You get burned. But PCC, it's sort of more like a warming. Uh, a warming pad or like a warming bag or like warm water in general when you're trying to, if like let's say, like, like let's say if you have like hypo, let's say if you have really really cold hands from the weather and then you want to warm it up. There's my analogy going here. But yeah, so, so PCC is just more like a warming pad or like warm water or something like that. It won't burn you, but it's, so it's a lot more milder, right? And that's exactly what it basically does, right? It's a lot more milder than, uh, the Jones region, so that's what allows us to stop right here at the aldehyde. So on the test, let's say if you're given a primary alcohol and your professor wants you to get it to only an aldehyde, make sure you, you use PCC and not Jones region. This is like one of the most common mistakes that students tend to make. Okay, now for secondary alcohols, what happens is your Jones region, right? If you take a look at the products for both of them, they're the same thing. 
So it doesn't really matter what you use for secondary alcohol. And that's a really good thing, because this way you guys don't really have to worry about it then. The main difference is basically for primary alcohols, it's this chunk right here that's different. Okay, yeah, and then, let's see. And then for tertiary alcohols, I'm sure you guys are gonna like this. So basically for tertiary alcohols, if you use PCC or Jones, nothing happens. Nothing happens. And now I'm gonna go over why all this kind of happens, right? So I don't have time to do a mechanism video right now before your exam, but the mechanism, the me but the mechanism videos will be up in the future. So in case any of you are interested, the link will be posted up here. Okay. So um, yeah, for primary alcohols, uh, the reason why I drew the the reason why I drew in the intermediates is so this this way um, with intermediates, you guys might be able to memorize the mechanism a little bit easier when you're on the test or you're in the test. But yeah. So what happens is it's kind of like an elimination reaction where you're taking away a hydrogen and using the electrons in the bond and migrating it over here to form a carbonyl, which is just a carbon double bonded to O, carbonyl. And that's how you get to this intermediate here, basically. Uh, your alcohol attaches onto your chromium region, and then, and then you balance all your charges in the mechanism, and then eventually you're going to be using water here to depronate the hydrogen and then bring the electrons over to, to depronate the hydrogen and then free up these electrons in the bond and allow it to migrate over into this in intermediate. And then after you get to this intermediate step here, what happens is the reason why I use the blue marker here is to show you guys that water actually attacks right here, the carbon right here, and adds on. And then because when water adds on, right, it has a positive charge. So one of the hydrogens on the water gets depronated, giving us an alcohol over here. So the carbonyl before got turned into a alcohol, and then your water is providing the second alcohol component of your carboxylic acid here. So yeah. And in the last step here, basically you're just redoing everything in the first part of the reaction. You're going to be attacking the Jones region again, and then balancing out your charges. And then water again is going to deprotonate the hydrogen here. Wait, hold on, sorry. It's going to deprotonate the hydrogen over here, freeing up this bond, these bonding electrons, so they can migrate over here to form the carbonyl. And then you get, that's how you get your carboxylic acid. Okay, but for PCC, right? So for PCC, um, you're basically doing the same exact thing, but it just stops at the aldehyde. It's just like that. It's just very mild. So yeah, you don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, yeah. So when I come out with my mechanism videos, in case any of this is unclear, make sure you check them out. It'll be a lot more clear there. I wanted to do mechanism videos, mechanism videos, but I just didn't have any time. But anyway, secondary alcohols. So the reason why your secondary alcohols is the same case for both of them is because you only have one hydrogen in both cases, right? That can get, I guess, get deprotonated and free up the electrons in the bond to migrate up here to form the carbonyl of the ketone. All right. So Jones and PCC, they give you the same exact thing. And then for tertiary alcohols, you just don't have any hydrogens at all attached to the carbon right here because these are all carbons. And then without any hydrogens, you can't get, you don't have that source of electrons to migrate over here and form a carbonyl. So, that's why you get nada, nothing at all. Yeah, okay. So hopefully this video helps you guys out with just memorizing, I guess, good uses of PCC and uh, Jones region, okay? Yeah, so um, good luck on your exams and everything, and make sure you share this video with your friends if you find it, find it helpful. Hopefully when my mechanism videos come out, it'll be a little bit more clear. Okay? Alright, see ya.